In the last video we started to look at writable nested representations in Django REST framework and notably what we looked at was overriding the create method on a serializer object and that allows us to support writable nested representations. Now the example we built up in the previous video was to override the create method on the serializer and what we did was create the order from the data that was posted in the post request but before we created that we popped out this items validated data and then for that we then created each associated order item as well so the order item is the nested object here it's a child of the order item so when we send a post request that contains not only the details for the order but also the order items we need to override create and tell Django REST framework and tell the serializer how to handle creating the object that the model serializer is tied to and that's the order but also any child objects such as these order items so that works on a POST request, we override the CREATE method. But what about a PUT request when we actually update existing data? Let's go back to the documentation. As well as the CREATE method, we also have an UPDATE method on serializers that we can override. Now the section here is on overriding the CREATE method as you can see here, but there is a section on UPDATE methods as well. Now for updates, as it says here, you'll want to think carefully about how to handle these updates to relationships. For example, what if the relationship is none, or what if there's no data in the post or the put request rather about that relationship? What should occur? Should you set it to null in the database? Should you ignore the data and leave the instance as it is? So for example, if the relationship does exist, but a put request comes in that doesn't contain any information about that relationship, should you set it to null or should you leave it as it is? And potentially you might also want to raise a validation error. So what you can do is override the update method on the serializer class. And what I'm going to do is just copy this signature here. And we're going to go back to the order create serializer that we have here. And we're going to create this update method. So let's do that just now. And I'm just going to pass on this at the moment. Notice the difference here in the signature. So the create method just takes the validated data, but the update method takes the existing instance. And that makes sense because if you're updating something, it has to already exist. If it doesn't, you want to actually create it. So these are distinct methods in Django REST framework. And the update is slightly more complex than the create method. Now what I'm going to do is go to api.http and that's where we defined some of the requests to our API. Now here we have a get request to get an individual order from the database and if we send that we get back the details for that order and notice the items here, it contains the quantity as well as the name and the price of the item and also a subtotal for that item. So that's how we get an order by its ID but if we look below that at the bottom here we have a put request that I've added and that's to the same URL essentially but it's just a different HTTP method, it's a put request. So we're sending a request to this order entity and we want to update it with the data here. So for this order here if I wanted to change the quantity of product 2 from the number 2 to 4 and let's say we wanted to change the quantity of product 3 to 2 I want to send a request with this body here and have that update happen on the back end. Now that's not going to happen at the moment because Django REST Framework has no idea how to update an instance based on this request body. So if we send this put request here, notice that we get back an error that the user field is required. So Django REST Framework doesn't know how to handle the user at the moment. We did cover that in the last video and we're going to see how to do it in this video as well with the update method. Now the first thing we want to do when we send an update request or a put request, we want to use a different serializer to parse that request body that's coming in and it's going to be exactly the same one as we used for the post request and it's going to be this one here where we actually define the update method. So let's go to our view set and I'm going to scroll down here to the order view set that we've been working with and in the last video we used this get serializer class method here on the Django REST framework view set and if the action was create we returned the order create serializer otherwise we defaulted to just the normal order serializer. Now I want to update this line of code here with the if statement we need to handle the update action as well so we're going to use an or logical statement here and we're going to check self.action and check if it's equal to update as well. So basically if it's a create or an update statement we're going to use the order create serializer to parse the incoming request body. When we try this again we should get a new error so I'm going to send this request again and notice we get an internal server error and that's because we've now written this update method and it's being called but it's not returning an object instance. So that's the next step here. I'm going to minimize this and go back to serializers.py. And just like we did in the create method here, I want to pop out this order item data. So let's start with that. We're going to get the items from the request and that's going to correspond to this array here. And then we can update the instance that's passed into the update method. And that's what the Django REST framework documentation shows as well. 
For example, here, instance.username, they're setting that to something from the validated data. And they provide a default in the .get method to the existing username. So if the user doesn't post or the client doesn't post a username and an email address, it's going to default to the one that already exists. Now for us, this is going to be slightly different. So let's go back to VS Code. Now that we've popped the items out of this data, what we can do is we can call the super classes update method. So it's going to be super.update and then we pass the instance in as well as the validated data. So the purpose of this one is to update the order itself not the child items that belong to the order that we're passing in with this items key in the request body. So we've updated the order now by calling super.update and that gives us back the instance. We can then check if the order item data has been posted in that request. So let's check if order item data is not none. So that should be not none. Now, if we have this data, what we can do is we can clear out the existing items from the order. So remember when the client sends a put request that contains the items data, what we can do is we can try and update the items one at a time and any items that are not sent in the put request or already exist in the database, we can optionally delete those. Again, that comes down to how you handle the update mechanism itself. I'm going to keep it very simple here and what I'm going to do is just remove any existing order items and add the new ones that have been sent in the put request. So let's go back to serializers.py. We're going to clear the existing items and we can get those items from the order instance itself. So it's going to be instance.items.all. When we get them, we can then call delete. Once we've deleted the existing items, what we can do is recreate the items, essentially, or create the new ones based on the updated data in the put request. So we're going to iterate over each item in the order item data that's been sent in the post request. And it's going to be similar to the create method where we did the same thing. So I'm going to copy this line of code. We are going to change this slightly. Let's paste it in here. And we're creating these order items and we're tying them to the instance this time. Now this instance was passed in as an argument and then we updated it here using super.update. And then just down here, if we have order items in the put request, what's going to happen is we're going to create each item in the database after we delete the existing items. And the final thing we need to do from this method is return the order instance. So we can do that at the end of the method. Now let's test this out again. I'm going to go back to api.http and let's go to this put request here. If we send this request now, we get back a response and we can actually see that this has now worked. So what's happened here is that we have a status of pending that matches what was sent in the put request and the quantity has been updated to four and to two respectively. Now, if I try this again and we change the status here and let's say we're updating this to confirmed, if we save that and send the request again, notice we get back a status of confirmed. Now, if we go back to the get request to the same order ID in this URL, so notice the ID here is the same. I'm going to update the token and let's send this request now and see what we get back. Notice the status is confirmed. And for the items, the response looks different, but the quantity is what matters here. That's what we updated. And we have four and two, which is what we set it to in this put request in the request body. So this is now working. If we go over the method we've used, let's go back to serializers.py. The update method here, takes the existing order instance and the validated data from the put request as parameters. And then it pops out those items that we're sending that removes them from validated data and it allows us to update the instance and pass in the validated data without those items. So Django REST Framework's model serializer knows how to update the instance based on the other fields in the request. Then we check if the order item data is not none. And remember, it could be none in this case. So what happens if we go back to api.http, if we removed items here, we should still be able to send this request. So if I send this or set this back to pending and we send the request here, we get back an error and that's because I've left a comma. Let's try this again. And we're actually getting another problem here. The items field is actually required in the put request. So that's something we might want to address in serializers.py. So the items is set to that nested order item create serializer. If we want to make the items optional when we create the order, we can set required equals false. And once we've done that, if we go back to api.http and send the request, now we can get back the response and it's updated the status here, but it's not done anything with the items. So what happens here is that when we don't have order item data, all of this code here is not going to run. So it's not going to delete the existing items. And of course, there are no new items to update. So for the nested objects, the behavior here, when we don't have the item data in the request, is just to leave the existing items as they are. If you want to change that, if the order item data is none, you could copy this line of code here and remove all of the existing items if that's the behavior that you want.
So again, it comes down to how do you handle these nested relationships when the data for those relationships is missing in the request. That's up to you and it's up to the application. Now, one thing I want to do just to end the video here is wrap some of this in a database transaction. We want to prevent this order from being partially updated. And again, this might be app specific, but what we're doing here is we're updating the order instance itself. And then we have a block of code here to delete the order items and then recreate or create new ones based on the data in the put request. Now, if anything goes wrong, you might not want to lose the existing items such as this line of code is going to do here. So one thing we can do is wrap all of the code here in a transaction. So let's go to the top of the file and right at the top here from django.db, let's import transaction and go back down to the serializer. And basically I want to start the transaction just when this instance is updated. So we can do that using a context manager here with transaction.atomic. And we can then take all of this code here and tab that inside the context manager. So basically it's going to update the existing instance and it's going to remove all the existing items and then create new items inside a transaction. So if any part of that fails, it's going to roll back and that'll prevent your order from being partially updated. Let's just make sure that works. If we go back to api.http, let's change the status to pending. And if we change the product to a quantity of three here and the second one to a quantity of one, and we then send this request, we get back the order data here and you can see the status and the quantities have been updated. So now the entire order and all of its items must be updated or nothing is gonna be updated. And that's the behavior of adding a transaction here and wrapping this database code inside the transaction. Now that's something we might want to also do with the create method that we wrote in the previous video. So I'm gonna do that just now here. Let's create the context manager and we're gonna tab this code over. So we're gonna create the order itself and all of the order items inside a transaction. There's no point in creating the order if the order items are not going to be created as well. So that partial state that we want to avoid, that's gonna be avoided by using a transaction. So this nested representation now works quite nicely. We have a create and an update method for creating a new order with optionally order items and also updating an existing order and the instance as well as updating its items as well. So serializers have these create and update methods. If you have complex relationships and you're sending complex data in a post or a put request, you can overwrite these in order to perform whatever logic you need to in order to get that data validated and into the database. Now, what about delete requests? We haven't looked at that at all. So let's go back to api.http. Now let's copy this URL here that we have for the put request. And I'm gonna to go to the bottom and we're gonna separate this out and I'm gonna paste this in and change the method to delete. Now, if we send it like this, it's not gonna work because we need to provide those authentication credentials. So what I'm gonna do is copy the authorization header as well. And let's bring that down and let's paste this authorization header in. So let's test this out when we send the request and we get back an HTTP 204 no content response. Now this indicates that the request has worked successfully. When we send a delete request to REST framework, and remove an entity from the database, REST Framework will send back this 204 no content response by default. Now, if we close this, and I'm gonna test the get request. So let's go back up here to this get request, and we have the same order ID here in the URL. Now let's send the get request, and notice now we get back this detail message here that no order matches the given query. So this ID no longer exists in the database, and that's because at the bottom, we've now sent the delete request and removed that from the database. Why does this work? It works because we're using in views.py the viewset class, and this is a subclass of model viewset, and it provides that destroy action. And that automatically knows how to delete an object based on the query set that's provided. So that just works out of the box. That's how useful model view sets can be when you want to have this functionality and all of these CRUD operations across a given model. So that's all for this video. We've learned how to override the serializer update method in order to handle cases where the client is going to send data in a put request to update an existing item and any nested items as well. We need to handle the logic for those nested items. So that's the purpose of overriding the update method. And we also use database transactions here and wrap the code so that we don't get any partial updates of order data and order item data happening in the database. So in the next video, we're going to look a little bit more closely at these fields here. And there's a couple of special values you can use for these fields and we're going to provide some good advice hopefully on what to use and what not to use. After that we're going to look at some topics in caching with Django REST Framework and we're going to set up Redis for that. 
and we'll also incorporate signals in order to invalidate the cache as well. And we're going to take a look at some headers that we can use. And these are very headers in HTTP. And these allow us to control caching based on specific headers in the request. So that's coming up and many more topics after that, including social authentication. That's been a common request, but if you have any other requests, let us know in the comments. And finally, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. And if you want to support the channel, I'll leave a link to this coffee page just below the video. And many thanks to everybody who has contributed to this page. Greatly appreciated and thank you for supporting the channel. So thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.